you brought a few demonstrations for us today and, um, and demonstrations that you show your students. So I thought it would be great to show our teachers and well, see how you teach and tell the stories. Tell I what to do teaching. whatever. I love What's teaching. this one? A sponge and water. Sponge what's, and water. So what's that? The, you know, while we're talking about gardening, this could be for anything. Uh, m most people who are going to buy pots, buy containers, they're all sold in the diameter. And the diameter is, <laughs> no one really cares about the diameter when right. it comes to the plants. It's the depth. Oh, I well, see. Well, I can tell you that. Yeah. But I can show it to you much better. Okay. For example, this is real simple. I love keeping things simple. Here's a sponge and here's some water. We're going to throw the sponge in water. Now, if this was a shallow pot, what you want to do is you want to get rid of the water but still have some moisture because too much water makes all sorts of diseases. Right. So if I take this up, that's how much is going to come out of this By pot itself, at right. that height. Okay? It's, it's essentially finished. But if I just turn it over, oh. all that is now coming out. Mm. That is Look this. At that. And that's how you show gravity, but how you show why anybody should get a deeper pot if you have... And for uh, the deeper roots. Too, deeper roots, the, everything is better by having deeper. The so width makes deeper no difference. Deeper pots. And I know somebody who knows that, Guy Wolf, who made these pots for there me. There you go. And he loves making tall pots. And this is one of my favorites. I, put, I grow a lot of things in here, begonias and things sure. that are just... Oh, what a great... I never saw that before. Well, it just Thank makes sense. Thank you. Well, it makes pleasure. sense. What about this? This is a... <laughs> is this a pulmonaria? This is. This is storytelling time. Lungwort. Lungwort. Listen to you. Yeah, you, you got See. it all. I mean, I'm so impressed. He didn't, he, he <laughs> didn't even tell me. <laughs> but this is one of my favorite plants because it's beautiful in the garden. And there are many varieties, right? It's fabulous in the garden. It yeah. flowers in the spring. It's Not perennial. in a nice name, lungwort. Ah, but it, it served Long a purpose, right? Name. Hey, back in the 1500s, a terrific botanist by the name of Paracelsus, he came up with this theory. He said that if a plant looks like a body part, it probably heals that body oh. part. He said the walnut healed the brain, healed headaches, you know what? Because it looks just like a brain. But if you look at this leaf at that time, all anatomy was coming into its own. It kind of looks like, a lung. like the alveoli of a lung, and it then he named it pulmonaria for the pulmonary uh -huh. system. But you also mentioned the common name, lungwort. Lungwort. It's an ugly what name. What an ugly name. Ah. But. Ah. W-O-R-T kind of means useful for something. Lungwort, kidneywort, spiderwort, barrenwort, the first drug for barren women. Yeah. Kidneywort looked like a kidney. Spiderwort for spider bites. So that's the term wart means. Oh. You tell that story? And this is for tubercular patients? This is for people they, that, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, remember, that probably brought holistic medicine to its lowest point. A lot of these things didn't work. But <laughs> it was a great story. And that's what Paracelsus did. Oh, I did. heard that lung wart worked. Yeah, lung wart does it. You want to, yeah. you know, chew it up here. Yeah. But anyway, that's where the wart means. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. All, these, all these warts, they just oh. mean all sorts of good things. A beautiful things. plant. Now, yeah. what about this? Storytelling time. OK. OK, I can teach you this. Not very pretty looking flower here. Are those dianthus? No. Well, that pink one is. Yeah, We're going to get there in a minute. Okay. This is a plant called Torenia. Well, who's going to remember Torenia? Yeah. Mm. You're not going to remember Torenia. So, however, its you. common name is wishbone flower. And why? You just peel down, and there is the wishbone. Oh, inside? Inside. The stamens? Yeah. Oh. You show that to one it person. It is. You show that to one person. They'll sneak around and show it to themselves and show it to somebody else and somebody else. You're and right. that's how they we get do. people excited about this they, stuff. They, you so do. just think where you're going for dinner. Thanks, yep. man. There you go. Wishbone flower. Okay. Easy story and great fun. Fantastic. Wishbone flower. Yeah. All these little things have stories. That's all I do is tell stories, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the dianthus? Well, everybody knows dianthus because all the gentlemen in the audience probably bought a corsage made out of a carnation, which is the dianthus. And, and you know, of course, what the common name for dianthus is pinks. But most people think that carnations or dianthus are called pinks because they're pink. No. No, because it looks like the petals have been cut with pinking shears. Yes. And that is so where it gets its name. So can you see that? Look at that. There's little, yeah, they do look. They're zigzags. Yeah. And now, now the problem uh, with pinking shears is that none of our young students, young people really know what know pinking, what pinking shears, shears are. are. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, oh my God! It's, it's, well, for more information <laughs> on all of Alan's books, including his newest, which is a phenomenal book, Armitage's Vines and Climbers, go to our website at MarthaStewart.com. All of these books are invaluable guides to the real gardener. Thanks, Alan. Thank Fantastic. What a great teacher. Thank you very much.